Okay guys, let's see if we can polish this up a little bit. Um, so last time we left off, um, we had this set up here. And as you can see, one of the ferns is going crazy. Uh, and it's having the jittery day. Um, and the reason it is doing that is because it's uh, colliding um, with uh, one of the static um, um, instant mesh foliages out here. Um, so one way we could try and fix that is to take uh, this guy here and take his um, collision uh, all the way down and that's going to take care of uh, this quite a bit um, it's still not uh, perfect though and so what, what we also can do is to go into the foliage and um, Right now they are set to block all. So we, since we are making, uh, we are still using this trace, uh, sphere trace, and eventually we might want to try and get rid of that. Um, we can do that in a few ways. Um, but for now, let's just keep this one um, because it's kind of convenient uh, while we're prototyping this. But we can see that we are tracing on the vis visibility channel, and um, that means that we can. That's it. Yeah. Uh, we can change this uh, from block all to just uh, say um, overlap all. If we change this to custom, we can see that it's uh, going to generate an overlap uh, event on the visibility channel. So um, we could actually just say, okay, ignore everything except visibility. And uh, that will still um, enable us to get the foliage activated. So let's do that for now. Um, we're going to talk a, a bit about <clears throat> some of the collision settings we can tweak on also, but that's uh, for something later. Okay, so um, still um, right now uh, we have a few uh, other issues uh, we need to look into. Um, and one of them is to create this, uh, create the, an illusion which is believable. Um, so it, it seems like every, everything is, um, is uh, active. And if we just for now turn on the, the, the material, uh, we can see a little bit of this problem a bit clearer. So um, when we uh, run around here, we still see a little bit of um, something is when they spawn, they're just going to make a little bit of movement here uh, on some of them. And we can do a little thing to minimize this by also making sure that the, the collision is not happening between them, uh, in between them. Um, I'm just going to do this in a, in a quick and dirty way, uh, because we're going to change this in eventually anyway. Um, but the thing is, on the blueprint, we have a collision setting on the skeletal mesh component set to uh, rack custom. I think it's set to rack, although... Um, what? It's set to... Maybe it's it was ragdoll, but um, anyway, it's 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 ignoring the pawn and it, it's ignoring the camera. And let's say we also uh, we are treating ourselves as a physics body, so we also want to uh, um, not uh, or to um, ignore uh, physics body um, collisions. So if we run with this, we will see that now we are not. Um, uh, seeing any movement, but that is actually because um, <clears throat> we are not colliding with anything um, at all. Um, and the reason is that our third person character, the mesh, is set to ragdoll. And if we in change this to custom, we can see that the pawn uh, isn't colliding, but the, the physics body will collide. So, and we just set this to uh, um, I think we said it. Did we set this to ignore? I can't remember. God damn it. Okay, we set it to ignore. So uh, we're not getting this uh, event at all. And we could try and set this to. Um, no, actually, this, this, that's not going to work because we need the, a blocking um, um, action on this. So we, we can't really do anything about that. So, But what we can do on the mesh, on our character mesh, can just play around with this and say, say okay let's pretend we are just a vehicle because we don't have any vehicles uh, in the in the game 
So right now we can actually um, uh, get a pretty convincing illusion that um, with this approach here. So another thing uh, I want to address in this video is if you watch closely, closely at this guy up here, for example, just uh, an example, um, you will see when I uh, enter here and it will be converted into um, a blueprint, you will see, watch the shadow, see what happens. You see the shadow changes quite drastically. And um, that's something you may not have noticed in my uh, demo video. And the reason uh, for that was uh, that I had some, um, I had quite a few, uh, uh, quite um, not as quite as many um, foliages on my scene. So I could get away with a, a little trick. Um, so let me just demonstrate what I did here. I need to turn this down because otherwise we're going to kill the performance completely. So um, I'm going to set this to 500 and set this to 0 0.5. And I'm go just going to uh, draw quite a few of these. I was actually maybe a little bit too many. So let's get rid of some of them. And what I did in my video was to set this to 1000 and set this all the way up to 1500 or maybe 1200. I can't remember how high I set this. And what is going on now is uh, we are getting them switched out at a distance. Uh, and that's gonna create, uh, because it's gonna happen quite far away, uh, the LOD uh, of the, the shadow is not going to be uh, changed, it's not going to be that um, clear. And um, this is something you need to consider when you make this, um, uh, because otherwise it's not going to look believable. But the problem is now we, well, uh, you can see the number in the corner here, up here, we have 128 uh, active um, Blueprint. So let's get out of the, the range of them. So now we have zero again. Let's turn on uh, frame counter. So we have a frame rate of I don't know. Maybe usually it's is at uh, 120. I think it's because I've been recording, or maybe I need to restart the engine. I don't know. So. Um, Let's get that down to zero. Okay, so one thing else we can do, I, I'm not really set, um, um, what do you call it, um, fam too familiar with these profiling things. So, but I just noticed that we have something called a unit graph. Uh, we can enable and we can see that uh, rise when we move into the, the area and start uh, activating blueprints. And when we get out of it, we can see that it's falling again. Um, so the green and yellow uh, are the GPU and the red is the game, but they're kind of following each other. You can see quite a lot of a difference in the red bar at the, at the top. Um, I think if that's a warning for us also, whenever it gets above that, it's gonna um, start coming out with warnings and with bad, <clears throat> about bad um, frame rate or something. So this is probably not what you uh, exactly what you want to do, but I just wanted to mention that that was at the time when I recorded my video, I didn't really um, take that into account. Um, so um, let's um, for now um, turn this off so we can uh, see how this looks. So when when you just run around here, everything is gonna look pretty uh, fluid and. Um, you're not really gonna be able to tell that um, we are switching things out. So this is a pretty convincing um, illusion. And uh, I guess if you're just playing around with this, and uh, then th this would uh, be perfectly okay. But since we uh, we are talking about polishing in this video, um, I just wanted to see how we can, or at least start the the talk about how we can uh, improve on this um, behavior. <clears throat> so um, I think I'm gonna continue with that in the next video because we have uh, quite a few options we can uh, try out and I don't really ha at this point I don't have the <clears throat> the 
the answer, uh, the perfect answer for this. Um, but before I, I end, we uh, we could pull this all the way down to 100. So um, <clears throat> let's see how that looks. So since we are running around in the circle here, we um, we can see that it stays pretty low, um, about 20. And it's keeping the frame rate pretty fluid. Oh, uh, <clears throat> so in this, if you just run around like this, it's not going to um, be too bad, I think. Um, If we run backwards, maybe no, we can't really see it. Oh, we need to be able. To, we we need to be looking for it. <clears throat> so so um, just turning it down like that would definitely be an option. And as I said in the beginning, uh, this will be a problem if you approach. Something is. I'm pretty sure it's it's something with the LODs going on here. As you can see the 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 shadows. If I switch the camera here, they are changing here and here. So and then I need this is something I need to look into definitely. Um, <clears throat> and now we can't see uh, when it's getting uh, activated. Let's turn that on. So it's pretty close when we activate them. So we're almost on top of them. So here we, here we can see it. Oh, we need to get out of range. Here we go. So anyway, this is um, yeah, this is a, a one uh, solution to this. And uh, also, since this is this is um, distance based right now, just pure distance. We're just making a dumb circle around us and checking if the distance is um, um, we are out of range of this. It's not really that intelligent, so that uh, we can uh, improve uh, in on this in quite a number of ways. Um, but that's something for the next video, I think. Um, so thank you for watching and um, see you in the next. Bye bye.